Welcome everyone back to Weekly Weather Updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest on the potential for the very warm and dry weather we could be seeing over the last 7-10 to 10 days of August. It is looking increasingly likely we'll see at least a plume of hot air coming up given a potential heat wave. Just really now we've got to iron out the details and have a look how long this warmer weather will last. As always we could be seeing low pressure trying to push in off the Atlantic potentially giving cooler temperatures but as it does break down eventually we could be seeing some big thunderstorms in some areas so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and do remember to follow me on twitter as well link is in the description so if we do have a look at the latest gfs you can see at the moment we're sort of in between weather systems we don't have a big area of low pressure over the top of the uk nor do we have high pressure we do have a small trough of low pressures that is moving through the uk at the moment and it's giving a few isolated showers here or there especially further westwards and northwards we'll have a look at the radar at the end of the video but it really isn't too uh, major at the moment many areas have seen a lot of cloud and a few drizzly showers um, around but nothing too significant we then do have that weird northwesterly wind that we've been looking at over the last few days it's bringing in quite a lot of um, moist air in off the north atlantic quite warm upper air temperatures so going to be a lot of low cloud and sort of misty foggy um, drizzly sort of weather a little bit miserable potentially about the northwards and westwards and all areas temperatures are going to be a little bit down even though the upper air temperature is quite warm simply because it's going to be a lot of cloud around beyond that is where we essentially start to see warm weather take hold we do see low pressure trying to push in but then we see this ridge of high pressure pu uh, build up from the south pushing in quite hot air into the south and southeast initially now the gfs is a little bit of an outlier within us ensembles it was an outlier once again yesterday um and it does not quite get that hot air that goes a bit further eastwards on this latest run. And we do stay in warmer air. We do have high pressure building over the top of the UK. But it's going to be warm and dry. But it's not going to be quite as hot as many of the other ensemble members and operational runs are showing. And as we head into the last few days of August, low pressure does run back in for the start um, of September. We do again push up potentially southerly winds. So the GFS does have a little bit more of low pressure influence. Everything has shifted a little bit further eastwards on this latest, latest run. We do see quite hot conditions at times, but doesn't really quite last. Um, as I said at the start of the video, we are ironing out the details. Definitely showing some hot weather for a couple days here or there, but it doesn't have it quite sustained as some other models have um, at this stage as it just has that low pressure pushing in but it could be more of a thundery outlook on this latest gfs with low pressure more involved so we've got to see uh what really wins out the high pressure building up from europe and from spain and north africa or the low pressure coming in off the atlantic so if we do have a look at the GM, you can see that low pressure moving in over uh, the next 12 hours or so, eventually clearing away. And then we get that weird northwesterly wind with a lot of low cloud, drizzle, uh, temperatures a little bit lower um, than we'd want in this sort of air mass, but it's simply because of the low cloud. Beyond that, the high pressure starts to build in. We do pull up that southerly uh, wind. We do see a brief push of warmer air, but it does get shunted away a little bit by low pressure. For the main high builds in right for day 10 you can see we are under this massive area of high pressure we haven't got blisteringly hot upper air temperatures but it's getting up towards 10 12 maybe 14 or 15 degrees 850 hpa which will comfortably give temperatures into the mid to high 20s if not getting towards 30 degrees and you can see this big area of high pressure dominating a little bit different to the gfs which had this all shifted a few hundred miles further eastwards with low pressure encroaching on ireland and western parts so GM is slightly different, but it is generally the same sort of pattern. We just need to really iron out the details on how much this low pressure is going to encroach. If it does start to push in, that's where we could see a big thunderstorm outbreak. Uh, but at the same time, I think many people would rather the drier and um, warmer weather from the high pressure at this stage for the last sort of week or so of August. So GM looks a lot more promising than the GFS. If we have a look at the ECMWF, it is actually quite similar to the GFS, uh, sorry, the, uh, not, not the GFS, the GEM in how it does play out. We've got that weird northwesterly wind moving in. And then we see GC low pressure trying to stay in control 
for around the 21st, 22nd, so next weekend, before it gets shunted away by a big area of high pressure, not quite getting the southerly plume of warmer air quite uh, quite as much on this latest ECMWF. It's a little bit further westwards, and you can see it's encroaching onto parts of southwest Ireland by this stage, and if we ran this on by another 24 or 40 hours, we would hope to see that, uh, that warmer air take over the whole of the UK. But we are firmly under high pressure, um, as it is building in off the Atlantic and from the south. Um, so things are looking dry, not quite as warm as the GM, um, but a lot drier than the GFS, which had low pressure breaking through. So all three models showing a broadly um, similar pattern, slightly different in the exact way it executes the high pressure, low pressure balance, but all showing this high pressure trying to push up from the south, GM making it fully break through with quite hot air with it. ECMWF, the high pressure takes over, but quite, not quite getting that hot air to the UK as quickly as the GM. And the EGFS just has um, just has that high pressure only briefly taking hold with low pressure taking back control um, after a few days of warmer and drier weather. So we'll have to keep an eye on it. It's not exactly resolved at this stage, but it's looking increasingly likely. And we've just got to iron out the details, of course. So if you do have a look at the GFS ensembles, you can see a lot of... Um, uncertainty, especially in the longer term at the exact upper air temperatures. But you can see in the next sort of four, five, six days, temperatures are going to be around average. See a little bit of a dip over the next couple of days as that low pressure eventually moves through overnight tonight into tomorrow uh, and into Tuesday. And then temperatures are just going to be really around average. Um, and we could see some drizzly showers here or there, but nothing really too much within, uh, within the precipitation sort of side. If we do have a look at the temperatures, though, at 850 HPA, as we head towards about the 20. 20th 21st of august so sort of end of this work uh, this coming working week into next weekend that's where upper air temperatures start to increase you see the gfs operational run goes quite high there this uh, thicker green line goes gets towards 15 degrees at 150 hpa but then crashes whereas you see a lot of other ensemble members stay really warm if not very very hot getting up towards 20 degrees at 850 hpa now those are the more extreme scenarios but plenty of ensemble members are staying at around 10 to 15 degrees at 850 hpa which would widely give temperatures into the mid to high 20s for the end of august you can see there are maybe four five six ensemble members along with the g uh, the GFS that goes down to maybe five uh, or five to seven degrees at 850 HPA, a little bit cooler and it has some precipitation signals. But you can see at the moment they are outliers. Can't say it's definitely not going to happen, seeing low pressure push in, but this stage definitely is the high pressure, hotter um, scenarios are more likely uh, and are more prevalent at this time. But again, you can't you can't really rule it out um, at this stage as ever. Being beyond five, six, seven days, there's always going to be uncertainty within the ensembles. That is what the ensembles is, is for, to reflect the uncertainty. But this stage, you can see that average line is about five degrees above the mean temperature from 19, um, from the 1981 uh, to 2010 average. So it's looking pretty, pretty good um, for hotter and drier weather. And the potential, of course, for a heat wave. If we do look at this yellow on someone, you can see it here right at the top, it's got a prolonged, very hot spell. That is um, on someone member number 11. And if we briefly have a look at that, you can see here of this massive Spanish plume of extremely hot air running up from the south. Starting around next weekend, where we do start to pull in some very hot air, you see that big high pressure takes control. We do pull up this really quite warm air from the south. Hot air, um, really for most of the UK, into the southeast especially. You do see a bit of a low pressure system does develop, a little bit of a cutoff low, and that would provide big, big thunderstorms um, where it interacts with that hot air. And by the end of the run, that hot air does start to dissipate, but we get a good sort of five to seven day heat wave. And if we do have a look at the two meter temperatures, which won't be the most accurate, um, considering it is an, an, an ensemble member, we would see temperatures get up into the high 20s if not 30 degrees and you could be seeing over parts of france potentially getting up towards 40 degrees um, if we do see these really high temperatures um, so looks really quite significant on some of the ensemble members now of course it is i'd say a warmer outlier it's not exactly um, what we're seeing the mean the mean is around 10 to 15 degrees at 850 hpa not quite the 20 degrees which is showing on um, permutation 11 so we'll just have to keep an eye on it, but it does show you what, uh, what's happening at the warmer end of the ensembles. 
if we do have a look at the E7 WF ensembles, just gives us an idea of the uh, difference in the ECMWF. So if we do run all the way out to seven days out, so this is going to be next weekend, you can see on a lot of the scenarios, we're seeing high pressure to our east and to our south, low pressure to our west, um, as uh, sorry, high pressure to our north and our east, high pressure, uh, low pressure to our south and our west. You can see on 15 of the runs, 29.4%. So there's a lot of uh, difference in the ensemble members at even day seven. They're all showing a broadly same pattern, but exactly where this low does end up. You can see 29.4% have high pressure over many parts, but with this little low pressure system pushing up from the southwest. Now this would introduce a lot of thundery activity, because of course the general wind direction is still from the south, so it's still gonna be quite warm and hot. You can see 25.5% have more high pressure influence, and that would be quite hot um, and dry, especially further eastwards, but even further westwards still, even though it's closer to the high, uh, low pressure, could still be very hot and dry as well. We see 15.7% of ensembles going for similar to what the GFS was going for with this big, um, big air of low pressure trying to push in off the um, off the Atlantic. Um, and that would be bringing in cooler and wetter conditions. You can see here, eight, including control and operational, having this low pressure pushing in with the high pressure to our south and our east is going to be bringing up southerly winds and will be quite thundery, um, thundery with that as well. It does look like quite an isolated low pressure system, so sitting little as a little cut off low with high pressure to the north and to the east, and that would be providing a lot of thunder activity within the uh, the warm weather. And then finally, we've got seven ensemble members with high pressure over the top of the UK, really quite fine and dry, and probably quite warm as well. So you can see. With all of the uh, ensemble runs at day seven, it is looking quite warm and dry um, for many areas. The potential for that low pressure system to push in from the southwest, bringing thunder activity. Still need to keep an eye on that, but some of the ensembles, I'd say around 30, 40% of them stay this stage, are, are pushing them in towards the uh, end of next weekend into the start of next week, which could provide some thunderstorms mixing in to the warm weather. If we do move out all the way to day 10, you can see high pressure is involved on pretty much all of the ensemble runs that low pressure system sort of gets pushed away and we see high pressure take control for most of the ensembles you've got 10 just here on the right that have more of a low pressure influence similar to what we saw um, at the seven day time frame um a little bit maybe un more unsettled there with warm uh, with warm sort of thundery activity so we'll just again have to keep an eye on it if we go right to the end of the run 360 hours you can see there is a lot of uncertainty right for the last couple of days of August. Still, quite a few ensembles going for quite hot and dry weather. You can see here the, uh, these two scenarios on the left. You can see this one here, a bit more cooler with low pressure influence, but not really a massive signal at this stage. Um, and we'll just really have to keep an eye on it. It is so far out, 15 days away. Um, it's too, really, too, too far out to give... Um, any significant forecast but it does look like between seven and ten days we're definitely going to be seeing some hotter weather just how long it lasts um, is going to be the uncertainty at this stage um, and how much thunderstorm how many thunderstorms do take off if we do get that low pressure system pushing in if we do finally have um, a look at the uh, precipitation charts from the uk met office run you so it does look like at the moment um the UK Met Office run isn't quite loading today's run. Um, there's no real point in looking at yesterday's run, but I doubt it would have changed too much. Still, a few showers over the next few days with temperatures in the low 20s. If we do finally have a look at the live radar, you can see, um, if we do refresh it briefly, you can see the few showers that are still around, um, especially further westwards and in the north. Not too much heavy rain. Um, but we just have to keep an eye on, on how it does develop over the next few days. Not No massive deluges anywhere, but potentially just some miserable rain and, uh, and some miserable conditions at times. But there will be plenty of dry weather in and around the showers over the next few days. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.